Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMSAT Green Booklets Practice Test 1, specifically Unit 31, Questions 95 to 98. And in this unit, we've been told that the quaternary ammonium ion in, say, an aliphatic structure, when it is reacted in the presence of heat and hydroxyl ions, we form an alkene. And the greatest proportion uh, of the alkene structure is going to be the one that has the least substituted alkyl groups. So that just means the double bond is going to be on the more terminal carbon. So when looking at the unit example provided, the quaternary ammonium structure and water, so this and the water, uh, is, is lost in a heated reaction in the presence of hydroxyl ions. So just note the movement and the substitution of the double bond in the molecule. So when we say it's going to be the most or least substituted, think about it this way. If we put the double bond here, this is going to be a 1, whether it's, let's say, butene, methane, or whatever compound it is. But if we put the double bond, let's say, over here, what we have now is a 1, 2, well, it's in 1, 2 alkane. So it's a 2 alkane as opposed to a 1 alkane. So this would be the major product, and this would be the minor product, because this one is more substituted than this one here. So bear in mind this fact when we go through the questions. So if we take a look at question 95, the first question, it asks, which um, of these three possible products is going to be the major product? Now, straight away, we're just going to look for the most terminal carbon, because the most terminal carbon is going to be, uh, the most terminal carbon with a double bond is going to be the major product because it's going to have the least um, substituted. So it's going to be the least substituted alkyl groups. So that means if we take a look, so just think about it this way, if we just draw them straight away. So number two, if we do C, 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 C. Number three, we've got C, C, C. So the double bonds here. C. And number four, is going to be again C C C double bond down here it's going to be C so you can see straight away this one is a one well that's that's going to be a one hexane so they've got if we count one two three four so sorry uh, one two three Four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, yep, so there are six. So, the hexane, so this is a one hexane. Over here, we've got a one, two, three. Oh, sorry, a one, two. So, a two hexane. And over here, we have a one, two, three hexane. So, we're looking for the least substituted. So, that's the one with the more terminal double bond carbon, so that's going to be the one hexane, so the answer therefore is going to be two. So 95 is going to be A. Cool, so let's move on to now question 96. The question asks, this one, this question is worded a bit poorly, but let's just go through it together. Um, it says the only alkene produced when choline hydroxide is Heated with a base would be a hydroxyethylene, but it immediately rearranges to form the acetaldehyde, as shown there. So let's just draw it quickly. So if we just draw the hydroxyethylene, so it's going to be our C, C, got our H, H. Over here, we've got our, let's say, OH and our H. And it's telling us that it straight away immediately gets converted to an acetaldehyde. So acetaldehyde is going to be a um, CH and it's going to be a CH3. Doesn't matter which side it's on, so that's fine. So what we have is this reaction. And it's saying, why do we only get um, one alkene? Uh, this alkane produced. Why is it that we only get this alkane produced? So, I mean, if you look for the answers, answer A and C are both incorrect because they're talking about the 
nitrogen atom or the nitrogen group. But we know that the nitrogen group has nothing to do with the double bond. So it's got nothing to do with the alkene. So A and C are both going to be incorrect right off the bat. So it's between B and D. So if we look at D, it says the functional group in choline is extremely basic, like the reaction conditions. That is true, but again, it doesn't explain why we're only getting one alkene. So the answer is not D. So the answer has to be B based on process of elimination. But as I said in the beginning, um, the question is, well, the answer was worded very poorly. Because it's saying ethylenes do not exist in isomeric forms. They do. Um, this is a structural isomer. So this acetaldehyde is actually a structural isomer of this alkene. Um, also, you can get um, diastereoisomers. So you can get, remember, Z and, um, Z and E isomers as well for this ethylene here. So um, it is word of poly because technically, yes, they do have isomeric forms. But you do understand what it means, though. So what they mean is that because there's only one, say, carbon that you can have a double bond with, you can't just have any other minor product. So this is always going to be the major product. And then it's just going to rearrange here. So let's say, for example, we actually had it as carbon, carbon, carbon. So what if we had it like this, we can have the major product here. Also, let's say another carbon here. So let's say it's a, but, uh, a butene or like a group like this. So we can have this major product and then the rest will be a minor product. So we can have a minor product here and a minor product here. Or actually, this would be a major product. So you'd have the major product and the minor product. So that's what they mean here. Because it's only got one double bond, it's only going to be the major product. So there aren't, going to, there aren't going to be any other minor alkene products, which is what they mean. So like, for example, if we had butene, so you can have the double bond on different parts of the in different parts of the structure. Over here, you can only have the double bond in one part of the structure. So that's what they really mean. But it is worded very poorly. So the answer by process elimination is B. So if we go on now to question 97. So this is more so with pattern recognition. Um, let's just do it. We can actually draw it. Um, it says the major hydrocarbon product formed when a certain quaternary ammonium ion is heated with a base is that product shown. And it's saying the structure of the quaternary ammonium ion that would give this major product is going to be. So remember what we do here. So we're supposed to, if we look at the structures A, B, C, D, what's happening is we're nicking off the ammonium group and we're also losing a hydrogen. But remember, we want to make sure if it's going to be the major product. So we're told that this is a major hydrogen project. It has to be the least substituted. So it means that it has to be probably the terminal. Um, uh, it's got to be, sorry, uh, obviously the one that has the, the least amount of alkyl groups bound to it. So if the answer is going to be C, but just for brevity, we'll go through why C is the answer. I mean, you can try with the other options, but let's just... Draw out C here. I might actually use a black pen um, just in case the colors go away now. Let's go to our toolbar. Let's get the black pen out. Uh, yep, sweet. So if we draw it, it's got C, H2, C, H3. We've got C, N plus C, H3, 3. We've got our CH2, CH3, and then we've got our CH2 and our CH3. So remember what we're doing? We've got to nick off this. So if we, if this, so what's happening is the electrons from this carbon, this bond, are going to go on here. So this is going to fall off now because it's nice and happy. So what happens is this carbon now is devoid of electrons. So this hydrogen here, one of the hydrogens here, is going to obviously um, give its electron here, and this hydrogen is going to go away with the fairies now. So what we're left with is, so if we could put the double bond now, we've got C, and we're left with an H, and we're also left with a CH. Three, and now let's complete the drawing. So we've got a CH2, CH3, 
3. And now if we complete this side, it's going to be, again, a CH. Where is it? CH2, CH3. So if we go take a look at our original drawing, so we've got here 4. So it should actually now look like our original. So if we take a look at 97, so we've got our CH3, we've got our H, we've got our CH3, CH2, and we've got our CH3, CH2, so uh, or C2, CH3. So you can see, I mean, if you can just rotate your head, I've drew, drawn it like this because that's how it was at the beginning, but if you just rotate the structure, it's exactly the same. So that's why the answer is C. So you can do the same for the other um, compounds and just try nicking off the nitrogen group, moving the electrons around, getting rid of the hydrogen, and you'll see why the structures don't add up to the major structure shown in 97. So if you play around with that, I mean, it'd be a fun exercise just to practice, but just for brevity, we'll go through um, the answer C for this question. So now on to 98. Now, 98 is a bit of a tricky one. So this one was designed to be tricky. So it's telling us that the cyclic amine Piperidine can be converted into a quaternary ammonium salt and then heated with excess of a strong base. So if this reaction is allowed to proceed to completion, what's the major hydrocarbon product that's going to be obtained? Now, all they've shown you here is piperidine. So what we have to do now is let's just do the reaction. So how about we just draw it? Um, so I'll get my whiteboard out. Get ghost mode out of the way. Whiteboard. So how about we just start off with our with our piperidine or piperidine. So we've got, sorry, my drawing is gonna be terrible. Hope it comes out well. Yep, so that's our piperidine. So now what we're told is we've heated it uh, and we've converted it to a quaternary ammonium salt with the strong base. So let's draw that now. So if we draw it in, it's going to be like this. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I don't draw it very bad. So we've got the nitrogen group here. Remember the, the quaternary, quaternary ammonium um, constituent. It's going to have your R group. Remember, it's got four groups attached. So one, two, three, four. So what happens now is, remember, since we've got the quaternary salt here, what's going to happen now is like the previous reactions, because this um, is positive, we have to give it an electron so we can obviously make it happy. So what happens is we get our electrons from the neighboring hydrogen. So remember, we've got two hydrogens here over here. And the reason why we use these hydrogens, and you're probably wondering, why did we use these hydrogens? Why didn't we use this? Why didn't we use this? So the reason why we use these hydrogens on this carbon is because remember, we're making the major product. And the major product has to have an alkene bonded to the least substituted number of alkyl groups. So what is going to happen now is we're going to lose this electron here. So this carbon here is going to lose its electrons to the N group. And this carbon is going to be positive now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to lose electrons from here to make a double bond on this carbon. So this group here, so that we can obviously make sure that uh, we satisfy the amount of electrons on this carbon. So what we're going to be left with, so once we add the heat and once we add the base, what we're going to be left with is, because we've made this double bond now, It'll be there, there, like that, and our N with R groups. Now you're probably wondering why didn't the N nick off? Because it's still bound to this carbon here. So now we've got our major product because the major product is substituted here. It's not substituted here or here or here or here. It's because it's the least substituted. So this is our major product. So we just followed the same principle that was provided in the stimulus. All we did was we just tried to make sure that 
we made the nitrogen happy by giving it an electron, and then we made the carbon happy by giving it an electron, and the hydrogen goes away. So we make the double bond. So that's all we've done. So we've, we've pretty much done what we've been told, and this is going to be our major product. Now, if we actually go back to our original, can you see how in question 98, it tells us the options are cyclopentane, one pentane, one pentine. None of these are, if I remove the whiteboard here, um, sorry, let me just remove it. So um, none of these actually fit this compound. So this major product is not A, B, or C. So that's the trick here. So the answer for 98 has to be D. So this sort of chemistry at the beginning, um, it, it would have been okay, but towards the end, you just you did have to knuckle down a bit and use your brain a bit just to um, just draw it out. So I know it is difficult. I know in the game set you're time pressed, but with these sorts of uh, with these sorts of questions, you've got to make sure you understand what the pattern is in the unit, and you've got to make sure you know how to manipulate these patterns so you can quickly draw the structures. So if you do have any more questions about this topic or anything about, I guess, uh, reactions in chemistry, you can post them in the comment section below or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.